I speak shortly about the, how to avoid AVN in uh, this plastic uh, DDH, and I will have to consider some special points. Okay, this is the title. Okay, AVN following DDH treatment, why we see this? We have to consider why we see this. We have to think about this, why we see such a situation as it is here. What is the reason for this? So, uh, my considerations, because of the inadequate or too aggressive violent treatment and not respecting the vulnerable vasculature of the femoral head, this is the main reason for me that uh, we produce AVN, because only a dislocated hip or subluxated or type two, three, or four hip ends not always up in a vascular necrosis, so something must happen. Okay. When we can see this, of course, we can see this in the early phase in initial treatment, and we see it so sometimes also in a late treatment, uh, in neglect cases, when we have a a not made the correct treatment. Okay, when we see this in the early phase, initial treatment, in my, I have a little bit an extreme uh, opinion, but one of, my, uh, of the reasons, in my opinion, is that uh, even when we make examination of the child, of the baby, we are sometimes very aggressive. When you see the hand in relation to the baby, you know, even when you make a gentle maneuver, you apply a lot of force to, to this hip, and sometimes you can produce some vascular injuries in the hip, and then you end up in the AVN. Okay, so the other point is we have to consider the, is the abduction when we go into the treatment, pelvic calmness or splints or in the past the cast, you know, this, we have to consider the vascularization of the hip. And uh, at the beginning, when I started 44 years ago with the treatment of DDH, this was a common to go up to 90, and we had 30% of AVN. And over the time, and especially under the influence of graft, we have seen that we have to go up only to 68 degrees. And the reason is, the vessel here, you know, this is on the back. You see, this is the external of the muscle, and the medial circumflex artery comes from the back. The problem is that that then here in this point, you interfere in a high abduction, permanent abduction with the vessel here. Okay, this is a situation we see very often and end up in an AVN, even in this. And you see, this is a, chi a child from China. In a catheter for three months, braced for other three months, you know, and in this bad position, uh, as uh, you have seen before, and then, of course, the vascularity or the circulation in the head is compromised, okay? AVN following DJ treatment, you see again, here is the, this is not treated very well, still dislocated because of the AVN as well, the head is not correct, does not develop, and so on. How to prevent? No unnecessary manipulation, no high force on the hip, abduction not over 60 uh, degrees, give a hip time for reduction. I, in our clinic, is forbidden to make a really ac acute reduction. If we see a not reduced hip, that means not the type two or sometimes type uh, three hip, is still uh, possible to go in the asset about the type four. We never allow to do this directly. We do this always gentle over the time and safe safe stabilization. So here, again, you see such a situation. You see highly abducted, uh, not well centered here, and this is the problematic zone. And then you see, of, co of course, when you go only in a 45, 60 degree of abduction, the vessel com uh, is um, blocked here by the posterior labrum, and if you go up to 60, 70 degrees, the uh, vascularity is compromised. So therefore, be careful when you make the, the uh, plastic cast in the correct position. But what we have to know, dislocated hip can always compromise circulation and delay in development. That means, very often we say this is an AVN, but this is not an AVN because you see this is really a, a, only a small ossification center because of the delay in the evolution of the head. This looks completely different, or this head, from, from a, such a structure when we see if we have an AVN. So, how to prevent? I mentioned this before. We have in our clinic a clear a, a algorithm according to the graph classification. Of course, when we go to the type, the type one, we have not to uh, treat, but when we start with the type three, a two C, C, unstable hip, D, we go, uh, and for an unstable hip, we go for a stabilization of the hip 
It's like in the fracture treatment, you know? If you have a stable fracture, like a green seed fracture, a splint is enough, perhaps, or you have only a fissure. But if you have an unstable fracture, how you treat it with a stable fixation? Cast, nail, plate. The hip is the same. We need a stable fixation of the hip in the correct position. And uh, if we have then a type 3D, that means subluxated, or a type 4 hip, then we go always without any compromise. If the, parent, uh, the parents do not accept our treatment regime and say, okay, go with another clinic, I go give no com make no compromise. We go slowly, step by step, and in 90%, even because we can treat the child very early, we can reduce every type 4 hip. Only 10% or 1 on 10, we have to open it or open the reduction. That means we have this uh, apparatus, and all this you can do in your clinic. Uh, a mechanical person can do this for you. And then you can 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, or 5, 5, 5, very gentle, depending on the uh, tension of the muscle and so on. And th this is how we do this in the bed. You see here, we start in this way. Then we go up to 60, 65 degrees. That means 120 in both. The mother can make breastfeeding as well on, on the, or feeding of the head, uh, the child. Here you see type 3 and 4 hip. This is then the x-ray. We can do an x-ray with uh, the child hanging in this position. And you see now, when I make the hilt line, the line, this is higher than this. So this is not well reduced. Where is the head? The head is, uh, is here, outside, how we can bring the hip inside now. Of course, you see this is the hip. We make a, a cross contraction in this way for some days, and then we make a new x-ray, and this is exactly the same case. Now you see it's coming down, it's symmetrical to this. And now this is the key. If you take the, the child away from the traction, then you manipulate on the leg, and the, head, uh, the hip can re-dislocate. No, we make the plaster cast again uh, directly on, in the hanging position without any anesthesia. You can see this is working in this way. We give the trousers over this, and then we start. The mother is feeding the child. The nurse is helping us, and the child is very quiet. And then we can make the plaster cast in the hanging position, and then we go in the flexion with the knee, and then the hip is stable, and then we give the child back to the mother, and the mother goes back at home. And after six weeks, we make the control in this way. So this is the situation of that good dance. In a later phase, if the child needs some more abduction, we go to this Lerach brace. It's similar like a public harness, but the abduction is more controlled. You see, and the child can start to walk, and we have good control. So the therapy, unstable fixation is only allowed in stable hip situation. Unstable hips must be fixed in a stable way. That means this is unstable, controlled abduction, and this is stable fixation. Thank you very much.